it's over, but it's not a order. In the order, yeah. Who is an order? Yes, I'd come up so soon, has got Good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you to share these few moments together to share God's word. We do this, of course, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today in the Armenian church is called Pun Paregentan, the day of good living, and the primary one, Pun Paregentan, the day of good living. Well, you may have heard about it in the West. They call it Mardi Gras. Yes, Fat Tuesday. It's the day where anything goes. Well, for us in the Armenian church, Lent begins tomorrow, Monday, and so therefore today is, well, the Fat Sunday, the day of good living, the day where everything goes, and you can do what you want to because tomorrow everything shuts down and we go into a different mode of operation, something a little bit more mellow, getting us ready for a major feast. Now let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about the five feasts in the Armenian church. We have five major feasts. The first one we just celebrated a couple months ago, of course, it was the Nativity, the Revelation of God, Theophany. The second one is Easter coming up. The third one we've celebrated before, we've celebrated together is the Transfiguration of Christ. The fourth one is the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And the fifth one is the Elevation of the Holy Cross. Now before each of these five major feast days, there is a period of fasting. Actually, not only these major feast days, there's other minor fasts, but these, each five of these major feast days has a period of fasting that prepares us for this big celebration. But because Easter is the main celebration of the Christian church, we have an extended period of fasting. And this period of fasting is called the Great Lenten Season. And it is not only fasting, as we're going to see today from Scripture, it's not only about what we do not take inside of us, but it's also what we do with our actions and with our prayers. It is a time where we, are, we heighten our awareness of the things around us, especially the spiritual treasures that God sets up for us. And so this period of Lent begins tomorrow. It is a period that prepares us for the big feast of Easter, that on that day, Christ has risen. Now you think about it, everybody else and all the other, all the other feasts are kind of like, you, you can figure it out that they're, they're special because they relate to Jesus. But what makes Jesus special? Of course, the Easter feast. Because a lot of people came and spoke some very good things in this world. They spoke about very special treasures that God has in store for us. They prophesied, but only Jesus was the only one who was able to come and conquer the worst of evil. He went up on a cross, and then three days later, there was the resurrection. And that's what we prepare for. We prepare for that Easter feast during the Lenten season. So today is Pun Paregentan. Depending on which side of Ararat you are, you can call it Pun Paregentan or you can call it Pun Paregentan. What's important is the feast, what it means. Pun means the primary. Pari means good. Gentani, you may have heard this. It means animal or living. Okay? So it is the day of good living. Today everything goes because tomorrow we shut down. Now what does that mean? Tomorrow, what does it mean we shut down? Well, we take a very... Well, we, we take life down to its bare essentials. What's necessary for us to live? You remember when Jesus was taken out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights? He fasted there in the wilderness. He was very hungry. And when he was tempted, when he was tempted by the devil himself, the devil said, look at these rocks. I know you're hungry. You're the son of God. Go ahead. Change these rocks into bread. You can do it. And what does Jesus answer? He says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the breath of God, that comes from God. I mean, think about that for a moment. Really, what is necessary in life? Sure, we need to take care of this physical body, but do we need the excesses that we pollute our bodies with? So during the Lenten season, we bring down our life to the bare essentials. What do we really need to survive? 
Now, you can think about that in many ways. Of course, we're talking about physical fasting. There's emotional fasting. There's fasting from evil things that we do. There's fasting, well, not from so many evil things, but from the unnecessary clutter that, that takes over our lives. Just think about it for a moment. You know, in the old days, this is way back, way, way, way back, prehistoric times. You know how we used to communicate? We'd talk to one another. We'd share with one another. Today, we not only have telephones, we can tweet one another, we can text each other, we can go on Facebook and put a message on someone's wall. And you know what? All of these means that we have, Skyping included, doesn't take away from that bare, that very, very special relationship that we need to have with one another. And so really bring it down. Bring it down. What do we really need? Are we in that texting, Skyping world that we're out there? Are we really cultivating relationships or are we just chattering away? Now that, that answer is not mine to give. It's not anyone else's. You have to decide that. And during the Lenten season, that's what we do. We look inward and we see what is really necessary for my life. What do I really need to get by? Those extra foods, those extra excesses that we, well, we call luxuries in life. Sometimes people find this an opportune time to give up smoking, give up drinking, some of their addictions that they have, some of them that no one else knows about, but the individual knows himself, right? So it's a time to look within. What is really necessary? And the scriptural reading that comes to us today from the Gospels, if you went to church this morning, you know that in, in the Gospel reading that was given was presented from the Gospel of St. Matthew. And I invite you to read the entire thing. Actually, do, you know what's a great way to start off the Lenten season? Read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. That is the Sermon on the Mount. But what we heard in our churches this morning, the lectionary reading, was Matthew chapter 6 in which Jesus talks about three important elements to the Lenten period. First of all, prayer. He says, when you pray, pray like this. And he gives us the Our Father who art in heaven. And you realize that it is a prayer of praise, not a prayer of shopping lists of this is what I need, God, but a prayer of thanking God for the blessings that we do have. Thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Sure, give us this day our daily bread, but remember, please, forgive me my trespasses. How should you forgive me, Father? Forgive me the same way I forgive others. Where is the, where, where is the, the difficulty in that one? Well, God will forgive, but what are we praying? We're praying to forgive me the way I forgive others. Where's the burden there? It's on me, right? I need to start forgiving other people. Forgiving him seven times, seven times, 77 times, forgiving all the time so that I could expect my Heavenly Father to forgive me too. So the first element is prayer. The second part Jesus talks about, he talks about fasting. He says, when you fast, he says, don't look disgusted and disappointed. And during the Lenten period, I invite you to go on a strict vegan diet. This is what the, the Armenian church prescribes. No meats at all. Yes, even chicken is a meat. Yes, even fish is a meat. Even on Fridays, and no matter what you've been taught, the strict Armenian church diet is no animal products. No animal products. That means dairy products. Now, I know there's health issues and things like that. You don't need to consult a doctor. What you need to do is consult yourself. Think about it. Be a little bit practical in this, okay? You don't need to go all out, but think about it. If you can, go on the vegan diet that the Armenian church prescribes, okay? Give up all animal products. And Jesus says here, when you fast, and this is what we would do during a fast, he says, don't disfigure your face. The worst thing you can do is go up to people and say, I, I'm so tired. You know what? I'm fasting. And Jesus says, that doesn't matter. He says, people do that all the time and there's no reward in that. He says, be happy. Be happy. Enjoy your life because that's what life is about. Realize that the very bare essentials in life get you by, that God gives you so many greater things in your heart than the things that fill up your stomach. So think about that. As you fast, look inward to what is really necessary physically. So there is prayer, our fasting life, and the third element that Jesus talks about in today's reading, he talks about almsgiving. 
Do good for others. Help others out. God has given you abundance. Hey, if you're watching this show right now, you're either watching me on a television, you're watching on a cable, or you're watching on the internet. Do you realize you're better off than most of the people in this world? You have an opportunity to make a change in other people's lives. Dig down deep. Give. And as Jesus says, don't let your right hand know what your left is doing, nor the left know what your right is doing. In other words, be quiet about your giving. Do it because it's right. Not because you need your name splattered around uh, someplace, but do it because it's right. It's what God invites us to do. Prayer, almsgiving, fasting, it makes up the Lenten season. Today is Pun Parigentan, the day of good living. Enjoy everything there is. Tomorrow, shut down and get ready. And now here's a promise I'm going to give you. If you follow these lessons during the Lenten period, next week we're going to be talking about the Expulsion Sunday, and then after that we have Prodigal. Every week, as you follow them, when you get to Easter, when you say Christ is risen, it's going to have a new meaning for you because you followed the prescription of the church. The prescription of the church means today it's a day of good living. Tomorrow we slow down, bring it down to the bare essentials. I know you can do it. God always asks us to look within. Here's an opportunity for the next 40 days as we go through this Lenten journey together. I invite you to get involved in the things that are important to you, the things that are important to God. Get involved at your church. Go to our diocesan website. If you don't have your local parish already selected, go down. There's a list of parishes. Call up the priest. Call up people that are involved. Say, I want to get involved. I want to do something that will improve myself so that I can help others. If you want to get involved with me, I'm at epostle.net. That's apostolic evangelism for an electronic world. Until next week, I remind you that we do all of this to give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.